doing uh, grassroots uh, tournament series for the past, you know, probably 20 years, 25 wow. years. Wow. And it's changed a couple owners, but now it's World Wally Series. We've been doing that for about about eight years. Yeah, you couldn't ask for a better day to go oh, out fishing. Nice, though. I mean, there's a little bit of wind. We had a little bit of cool rain last night, so ho yeah. hoping the fish will fire up from that. Yeah, well, the water's still pretty hot out there. It's hot. You still got the summertime bite out here. Right, right. Um, you know, it's it's a little tough. There's a lot of bait fish out there, so it's going to be interesting. Um, yeah. I think you're still going to need probably, you know, 15, 20 pounds to win it. So. Wow. Okay. Well, we'll have to get out to work. Uh, as you know, I'm not a big fisherman. I'm just learning how to do all this stuff. I'm super excited to be with uh, with Brian today, uh, and I, get, I hear he's one of the best. Yeah, you got a, you got a good partner for sure. Brian he's, Mazer. Uh, he's going to show you some stuff. Oh, right on. Sure. You'll, you'll have fun. Well, guys, we're out here at uh, Port uh, Barney, Blarney, yep. Fox Lake. Yeah. Okay, and uh, with the World Walleye Association, check them out. They've got some tournaments coming up. Yeah, we got two more qualifiers coming up uh, for this year, and then we also have a championship for this year. Um, if you're interested in getting the series, check us out on Facebook, and you can sign up online. Okay. Do you but have to be from the state of Illinois to be in no, those tournaments? You, you can, can travel from wherever you want. Okay. Well, so. Well, there you go, everybody, with Kyle Dunn. Check him out. He's got his own YouTube site. Yeah, I also have uh, Dunn Outdoors. It's on Facebook, YouTube, and uh, we're uh, getting a website up running. All right, we're going to get out there and get on the water. Good morning to everybody out there. Thanks for watching morning, the show. It's beautiful out here. We're getting ready to get started. What are you thinking? We're going to make about a two-mile run first thing this morning. We're going to go fish. The Fox Channel Lakes has a lot of no-wake zones where you transition from lake to lake. We're going to go fish one of those no-wake zones where you get a washout from the prop wash from the boats taking out, so it creates a little trough. We're gonna go troll that trough for a little bit first thing this morning, and after that, well, it's gonna be where the wind takes us. Tell me a little bit about your boat. So right now, um, this is a Crestliner Raptor 2100. Um, I get this boat every year. I'm sponsored through Crestliner and Brunswick Mortar Corp um, and Liberty Marine Center. So you've got the Raptor 2100. My electronics that I run are Lowrance Electronics, all touch screens. Um, I run the Motor Guide XI5 on the bow that is networked to all of the electronics on the boat. So what I mean by like networked is this graph can read the transducer that's on the trolling motor or the one that's on the back of the boat. Vice versa, same with the graph that's in the front of the boat. It's powered by the Mercury Verado 350 and then we have the 99 Pro Kicker for trolling next to it. Good morning. Good morning. So Brian, you've been doing this for a while. Yeah, I've been at this for a day or two, you can safely yeah. say. Yeah. Your, your wife is pretty patient with you. Yeah, she's very understanding. <laughs> In order to be able to do the things that we do, you've got to have the support network at home. Your wife's got to understand that there's going to be days, and no, forget days, there's going to be weeks on end where you're truly not home. Yeah. And so. My wife's very understanding. She's been with me for a long time. She was with me back when I used to travel a lot. So I don't know what else to say other than she supports me. She understands it at times. She likes me to be home, but it makes it to where, let's call it when I am home, we appreciate it a little bit more. Tell me a little bit of World Walleye Association. You know them better than I do. So the World Walleye Association is, for lack of better terms, a grassroots program. It's a local uh, tournament series here on the Fox Channel Lakes. Um, for, let's call it the Fox Channel Lakes, the series has over the years gone up, down, up, down, you know, like let's call it due to the economy. You know, at the end of the day, this is a very expensive hobby to get into, yeah. um, depending on the boat that you get and all the setup and all the gear. So it's one of those that when the economy's good, tournament fishing's good. When the economy's bad, it's a little bit tougher, a little bit rough because people just don't have the disposable income. Tell me about some of your sponsors that you have. So my sponsors that I have, um, like I stated earlier, I'm with uh, Liberty Marine Center, which is who provides the Crestliner boat. Um, you have Mercury Outboard. Is Liberty in this area? Liberty Marine is in Grays Lake, Illinois. Okay, great. So they're in Northern Illinois here. We sell Crestliner boats um, powered by Mercury Outboards. My other sponsors that I have, I'm sponsored by Woodstock Line uh, Company. Woodstock Line Company, I've been with them for over a decade now. Um, Doc's Custom Jigs, the custom jig maker. For walleye fishing, bass fishing, pan fishing, you name it, he makes custom jigs for any application. So when we're out there trolling today, what kind of what kind of lures are we going to be using? So I use on, on the Channel Lakes. I use an awful lot of Salmo Hornets, and I also use a lot of Berkeley Flicker Shad Jointed Flicker Shads. Is what I use a lot of. So um, as you know, I'm very new to this whole sport. We're going to be fishing horizontally today, not vertical. Correct. 
Okay. We're gonna be trolling behind the boat depending on the depth we're in. That's how we determine how far back the lines go. And at this part of the season, uh, going to early fall, end of the summer, the walleye are generally deep around 25 feet, aren't they? It depends on the body of water. This body of water really doesn't have, let's call it more than a handful of places at best that are 25 feet deep. The average depth of the chain, I believe, is about five, six feet deep. So when you have a system that's that shallow, the fish aren't going to transition to that deep of water. The fish here, are, it's a little bit different than anywhere else you'll find for the most part in the nation. Fish stay shallow chasing bait. Well, there you go, everybody. We're out here fishing. It's early morning. It's absolutely beautiful. We got a, a slight little wind yeah, we got... right now, so that's that's usable. Yeah, breeze is always good. Feels good, especially with the temperatures that we have outside. It's a lot better than it being stagnant. Looking at the clouds right now, we might get a little bit of rain a little later on. So hopefully the fish have got the chew on and we'll get some good bites for this What kind of knot you tie in there? Tie a polymer knot. It's the only knot that I use anymore these days. I used to use the improved clinch until I had it pull out on too many, let's call it big fish. I've never lost a fish due to a knot failure tying a polymer knot. So tell me a little bit about what's going to happen right now. Right now we're letting out lines, um, we're going to run 55, 65, 65 out the back, 55 out the front. Since we've never fished before, I'm going to first run us with four lines. That way we can kind of, let's call it for lack of better terms, get a little system together before we create a big mess and then I'm sitting <laughs> in the back of the boat fixing all of our mess that we Why just created. Bring this guy with me? Right, so we're just going to get this set up really quick here and then go from there. Run, like for my trolling rods, I run all St. Croix uh, trolling rods. I get it, there's a gazillion different rods out on the market. Um, some people think St. Croix are expensive. Um, it depends on the series that you're fishing. You can spend anywhere from, let's call it a hundred bucks a rod all the way up to a few hundred dollars a rod. I use their St. Croix uh, trolling rods uh, paired with Akuma cold water trolling reels. That you weren't setting up any poles this morning, so that all that's done already. You kind yes. of prepped that work at home or what were you 100%. Doing? Like, I mean, I was on the water yesterday, and then when I'm at home, or say I'm on the road at the hotel parking lot, I will set all of that up before I get on the Let water. Let me see that lure really quick. Now, is that the hornet? Is that what you're talking about? Did I, did I pronounce that correctly? Yes, this is a Salmo hornet. The Salmo hornet. So Salmo is the manufacturer, the Hornet is, is the, the lure. Yes, that's, that's the series. That's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, a lot of like, I like to laugh. I believe, don't get me wrong, fishing lures catch fish, but they're first and foremost designed to catch fish. It's absolutely beautiful out here. It's about already, what, 70 degrees? Oh, for sure. It's 70 degrees. I came across a great book if you're interested and you're looking for a book. It's called Never Forsaken, The Juan Ortiz Story. It's on Amazon, so if you're looking for a good book to read uh, mom and dads and even the kids out there, it is a great motivational uh, story about uh, a guy who uh, did whatever he had to do to keep his family together um, through a lot of uh, trials in his life, but he conquered and ended up becoming extremely successful. So if you get a chance, check that book out, Never Forsaken, The Juan Ortiz Story, uh, yeah. with the World Walleye Association and uh, Brian Mazur. Uh, pro fisherman's taking me out. We're having a good time. We've caught three fish already. Not the right ones. Not the right ones, but at least we're putting fish in the boat. There, yeah, that's all that matters. We'll be right back right after this.
see what you've got. Okay, you got a striper. I've got a walleye. Yes. I've got a walleye. Yes. Watch out, watch out. Just put that in the rod holder. Okay. Take this rod right here. Take your time. Just come up with it. Oh, no, 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 no. Quick cranking. I got it. Yeah, <laughs> baby. There it is. Woohoo! Beautiful. Hey, Tony. Yeah, bro. <laughs> there you go, dude. Yes. There you go. Yeah. So, we're Tony, it, we're going to do this in the bottom of the boat for the pitchers that I need for the tournament, okay? okay. Oh, oh, oh. So, I need a picture of you. Yeah. Like, you're going to be where I am. Go like this. Okay. There you go. Look at that smile. Awesome shot. Got it. Hang on. Don't let it go just yet. Well, that's it, everybody. We're in the money for sure. We just caught our first walleye. He was about 18 inches long, wasn't he, Brian? Yes. Oh, absolutely. How about that? I like to thank the World Walleye Association for inviting me out today. I'm having a great time, and uh, I'm here fishing with Brian. And we're on this beautiful boat, this crest liner. It's just a wonderful day. It's about 75 degrees out on Channel Lakes. Don't Good job, guys. Thanks for coming. Um, next year, open. It's going to be a little different. Uh, the board's been talking about it. We'll 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 talk about it at the end of the year. Also, um, it's going to be, be a completely different format. So look forward to 2020. It's it'll be fun. So uh, keep your ears open for that info coming up. That's a wrap. Thanks everybody.